what's up everybody it's caleb and colton back again here for another booming sooners episode we are on episode number two uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm gonna let you take it from here colton oh, all right <laughs> yeah that's stuttering. Um, hey dude you're doing better you're doing better okay <laughs> so there's not much going on right now in the college football world so what we decided we're going to talk about this time um is our top five returning quarterbacks in college football for the 2021 season. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom, number five, and work our way up to number one, I think is what we're going to do. And um, I think we should just jump right into it. Caleb, do you want to start off with your number five? Yeah, yeah. We'll just we'll keep it short and simple. Um, that way we don't have everybody here all night. But yeah, I'll start with my number five. Uh, <laughs> my number five, I went with JT Daniels out of Georgia. Uh, Pretty solid guy last season. Uh, I think, I mean, he. I wanted to keep him on my top five. And then again, though, I also wanted to sub him out for Spencer Sanders just because I think Spencer Sanders is going to be a lot better than people are giving him credit for at Oklahoma State. Um, but that's maybe that's just me being too optimistic for them. But yeah, I've got JT Daniels at number five. I mean, He's gonna be he's gonna be pretty good for Georgia. I mean, regardless, Georgia's always gonna be decent. I think. Uh, I, I mean, mm-hmm. Kirby Smart's always gonna have that crazy offense. It's just gonna be a matter of can the offense keep up. I think it's gonna be a harder time with him because uh, he lost uh, George Pickens uh, to mm-hmm. that. He tore his ACL, didn't he? It was an ACL tear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lost Pickens to an ACL tear, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for him. That's why I wasn't comfortable putting him higher. Had Pickens been uninjured, I probably would have put him higher up. Uh, but, I mean, he's a solid QB. I mean, 80, 80 for 119, uh, 1,231 yards, 10 touchdowns, and two interceptions. I mean, the the interception count there is what really, really struck my mind. Uh, I think that we've got a chance to see him go off this season. So that's my number five. Yeah, good, solid pick because no, my number five is also JT Daniels. Um, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. I mean, <laughs> you know, he um, you know, he he was out most of the season last season, uh still recovering from the um ACL injury he endured uh while he was still at USC, you know, and he transferred to Georgia, still injured and he he finally got to play the the final four games for them, won all four games. He's technically undefeated as a Georgia Bulldog. And uh the stats that you just listed off, you know, his, his um yards and touchdowns and picks. I mean, that was all just in four games, four fantastic games. So, I think he is also set to have a fantastic year in his uh second season uh with georgia so i i think he is going to be solid he could definitely be higher but we didn't get to see him enough last year to determine if he should be higher so he is my number five pick as well yeah yeah pretty pretty sad you know it's kind of like a what what could have been story there with georgia uh, mm-hmm. because of them not having jt but <laughs> yeah well i just had one of those <laughs> i had one of those nightmare ads just now colton uh, those <laughs> ads in my browser blowing my eardrums out dude uh, i swear <laughs> so uh at, at number four uh i i feel like I probably should put them a little bit higher, but there are just so many returning returning quarterbacks this season that have just uh, – uh, it's like the odds aren't even against them this season for them to go off. So it's it's really hard for me to place them here, but I've got De'Eric King out of Miami. Mm, okay. Uh, dude, this man is about to go crazy. I think you know it. <laughs> I think everybody knows it. It's about to be a really, really solid season for De'Eric King as long as he can stay healthy. For sure. Word as long. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll again, this is another prolific signal caller that shouldn't have any problems at all. I mean, you look at his, you look at his season last year, uh, two eleven to three twenty nine. Or wait, did he even play last year? What am I saying? Yeah, I mean, he he played most of the season and got injured in the uh, bowl game, I believe. Okay, okay, that's what I was thinking, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't insane. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this man went off for two eleven of three twenty nine, two thousand six hundred and eighty six yards, twenty three touchdowns, and five interceptions. Mm-hmm. It's pretty damn impressive. For uh, sure, he's got a good resume. Um, I mean, they they've got a good OC there. 
I, I don't see any reason why Derek King can't go nuts. I'll kind of let you take the reins on every other one. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> no, no, that's a great pick. I like Derek King a little better coming into this season, I think. I have him one uh, spot higher than you, but I'll get into that for, uh, here in a second. My number four, I actually have Grayson McCall with uh, Coastal Carolina. Now, Chanticleers. The, yeah, dude. So, okay. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have him lower uh, than I do, for sure. I There's no doubt that he's a top 10 quarterback coming in, but I definitely think he is deserving of a top five spot. I mean, his stats from last year are absolutely insane. I mean, he, he played every single game, uh, had almost a perfect season. He only lost his uh, bowl game, and it was a close game in overtime. His stats on the season, he threw four. Uh, almost 2,500 yards in the air, uh, almost 70% completion percentage, 26 touchdowns to only three interceptions all year long, and his uh, passer rating sat at a 184.3 by the end of the season. Yeah, it, dude, it was <laughs> fan-freaking-tastic. And, uh, hit, I mean, their whole offense is coming back except for their starting running back, but he won't miss him that much because he's going to have his star receiver, uh, all of his experienced offensive line back, and I think they're going to have another virtually perfect season, and I think he is going to just go off. I think I think he's definitely going to prove himself to be a first-rounder in next year's draft, but we'll just have to see. Uh, I have high hopes for him, but I threw him at my number four. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's solid. The the only thing about doing the top five, man, is there's so many other options that, and, and again, it's so early, you know, it's preseason. There's no way to actually tell how good these guys are going to be, but mm-hmm. there's a plethora of other options out there yeah. for us to include. But I mean, you can't do it with, with a top five. So I, yeah. I, I definitely respect that. Uh, I think, you know, Coastal Carolina, I think it's just going to kind of be a complete re, uh complete uh revamp of last season if not better Mm -hmm. um but so for for my number three uh i've got sam howell this guy is about to ball out uh my oh man this guy's on my heisman heisman preseason watch list um i think if if spencer rattler doesn't take home the heisman this season it's gonna be sam howell Mm -hmm. uh this dude is nuts i mean absolutely crazy um his stats last season, uh, 237 of 348, uh, 3,586 yards. This man almost threw 4,000 passing yards last season. 30 touchdowns and seven interceptions, dude. That is absolutely nuts. Yeah. There's no reason why he can't do it. <laughs> um, I mean, dude, this guy is well on pace to completely obliterate every single program record. Uh, for passing mm-hmm. uh, at, at Chapel Hill. I mean, there's no reason why he can't. Um, and like I said, do not be surprised if the the Heisman race, in my opinion, between Spencer Rattler and Sam Howell is just going to be who has a, a a worse one of those bad games. You know yeah, what I mean? Those trap course. games where you get in trouble, you know, you throw a pick or something like that. The defense mm-hmm. is starting to pick up on the on the offensive calls. Uh, it, it's just, it's whoever has the worst game basically is going to lose <laughs> yeah. the Heisman. And it's uh, bound to happen to one of those guys, unfortunately. Oh yeah. It, it yeah. just happens. It always happens. Absolutely. Um, but my number three, I'm going to come back to D Eric King. Like I said, you, I mean, you know, you already kind of gave a little rundown for him, but he is probably going to be the best true dual threat quarterback coming into this season. I mean, I agree. I mean, he on the ground, he is just insane. He is quick. He has fast feet. He's just all over the place. He can escape the tackles. He's just insane. As long as he is healthy, he's going to have a fantastic season. They say uh, that he is crushing every milestone in the recovery for his um, ACL injury. And I hope that's the case uh, because I love to watch this guy play and as long as he does come in healthy and can avoid injury and get back to his old self he's going to go off um one of the key additions that the miami hurricanes uh got from the transfer portal is one of our ex-oklahoma boys charleston rambo who 
you could probably agree he is ready <laughs> to go. I mean, he'll he'll be ready. He's going to flourish with Miami, uh, and Derek King's definitely going to get the ball to him. He's going to have insane stats, and um, as long as he can stay healthy, he is well deserved of this number three spot. Yeah, I w- I would definitely not be surprised if uh, if Rambo is a uh, first rounder next mm-hmm. year. Uh, for next year's draft, but yeah, oh, I, yeah, I can definitely see that. I honestly completely slipped my mind that Rambo had transferred over there. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be probably. I mean, if I was King, I he'd be my main weapon. Mm-hmm. Uh, at number two, I've got and see, this is another hard one. I I've got Brock Purdy. Uh, there, there's no really way for me to explain myself. I'm an OU fan. I think yeah. I know who my number one is going to be. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've got I've got Brock Purdy there. I mean, man, you look at all the weapons that Purdy's got. There's no way this guy can't ball out again. Um, two two hundred and forty three out of three sixty five last season on attempts. Two thousand seven hundred fifty yards, nineteen touchdowns, and nine interceptions. Interceptions were a bit high. Uh, I I'm not for sure that. Iowa State is going to wind up having a Heisman finalist out of Brock Purdy, but I mean, obviously, this guy's the this guy's the greatest quarterback that Iowa State's ever seen. Yeah, uh, no, oh, yeah. no doubt about that. Um, if if you guys think you can find a stat of there being a better quarterback, let me know <laughs> because there is not one. Uh, th- this man is going to go off. Uh, I've got him at number two because obviously our defense is going to tear him apart. Uh, so <laughs> it, it can't be too crazy, you know, that, that Sooners defense is about to rough them up, I think. But, uh, yeah, I've got them at my number two. I think that's a pretty solid lock there. Kind of, sort of. It just kind of all depends. Yeah. Dude, I like that, man. That's very surprising. It's a hopeful pick to me. I, I would love to see him uh, play well enough for him, you know, to deserve that number two spot you gave him. That I like that pick, though. That's Really awesome that you put him that high. He he's a top ten for me. I didn't slip him in my top five, just because you know last year looking at the stats wasn't as great as it could have been for a you know a true quarterback. But um, mm. I do like it though. So yeah, um, who I have at my number two is you know what Caleb? I just got another ad myself. What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> okay, so. My number two, I threw uh, Sam Howell here, North Carolina. Uh, He is returning. He has all five of his starting offensive linemen back. He had an insane season uh, last year. I mean, his stats, if you look at them, I I think you named a few of them off. But he he threw for over 3,500 yards on 68.1% completion percentage, 30 touchdowns to only seven interceptions. Had a great season, only a couple losses in there. They did lose to A&M in the Orange Bowl. Uh, pretty bad loss, but A&M was just the beefier team at that point. Coming back this year, I mean, you never know. North Carolina might have better. It. Yeah, but um, he, he's got some some great receivers, uh, great running back to hand off to. And I think, uh, like you said earlier... He is definitely going to be a Heisman finalist. There's just no doubt about it. The guy is too much of a stud. His his stats from last year uh, just do the talking for him here. He's coming back super experienced and ready to go. And so um, I threw him at my number two. Yeah, yeah, that's solid. I mean, like I like I said earlier, it's either going to be Sam or Spencer. I Mm -hmm. think for the for the Heisman for sure. they're they're just they're both too good, honestly. Yeah. Uh it's almost like a cheat code for, for either team. Uh my number one, as I've already stated, uh I've got, of course, the one, the only Spencer Rattler. What? Uh, <laughs> I know, oh Shocker Oh my hum. god. Dude, so hear me out, right? Like I said, I am gonna I'm always gonna be favoring towards the Sooners. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but you look at this man's stats. I mean, you you look at everything about Spencer Rattler. How can you not? Mm-hmm. How can he not be your most optimistic quarterback for the twenty twenty one season? Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's no other guy out there that has the numbers and the stats to match him. Yeah, uh, especially at, uh, in a freshman season, nonetheless. I mean, this dude. 
uh, props to him, honestly. Freshman season last year, uh, 214 for 317, 3,031 yards, 30 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. Obviously, I think we're both going to see that uh, the, those interceptions go way down. Uh, oh, yeah. Obviously, he's going to have a couple. I'm pr- I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna have him finishing the season at four if I was to predict anything. But mm-hmm. dude, this man is about to go crazy. He's my he's my Heisman winner preseason. So mm-hmm. we'll we'll just have to see how everything pans out. But dude, we we've got some dogs on our O line. Our receiving mm-hmm. core's too deep. We're too good. Yeah, there's no way Spencer Rattler can't just blow his stats off the page. Yep. I dude, I 100% agree. He finished the season strong after the shaky start he had in the first what three, four, five weeks. He finished strong last oh, year, yeah. so he he's my number one as well. We got some great receivers, like you mentioned. You know, we just got the the uh, the transfer from Arkansas, Mike Woods, who looks insane. Um, and I mean, finished super super strong last year. He's definitely gonna. There's no way he cannot win the Heisman. This year now, um, stats last year they're they're not as great as you would think. Now, honestly, uh, uh, Sam Howell probably has better true passing stats than him. Oh yeah, um, but he Spencer Adler just has the better team going into this season. I I honestly, even though I love OU, I was tempted to put Sam Howell above Spencer Rattler, but Spencer Rattler has the better weapons, the better team going into this season, and I think he is better set up for the breakout season that I hope he is going to have. So um, definitely number one. Uh, The only thing that scares me, you know, we just lost Creed Humphrey at center. Um, I feel like there's going to be times, at least early in the season, he could be shaken up a little bit, take a few hits, have to be on his feet a lot more. But I think whenever they get in rhythm, he's able to stay in the pocket and make those accurate throws. That's when he's going to start flourishing and have his breakout Heisman season. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this: uh, who who are you picking to be uh, Spencer Rattler's uh, number one receiver or weapon of the oh, offense? Gosh, dude, either Mike Woods or. Um, Jaden Hazelwood. I like Jaden Hazelwood because he's a long, lanky receiver with fantastic hands, and he's got some speed on him. He's got some speed. He really does. And uh, But I don't know. I mean, you saw Mike Woods in that uh, spring game, you know, had a fantastic game. Even, uh, what's his name, uh, Mario Williams, he yeah. had a fantastic game too. So I, it's tough because there's so many great, targets to throw to so i can't choose who's going to be his number one dude but it's it's looking good who do you think so call me crazy for this all you want to i've got a weird hunch that we are going to see i i think we're going to see austin stogner go crazy oh yeah and that sound that sounds kind of weird i think I think Spencer's three main targets this season, and you can call me crazy for this one as well because he's a tailback. Um, Eric Gray. Okay. Just you think because, they're going to use him as a receiving back primarily? Oh, dude, yeah, absolutely. I, I think we're going to see Eric Gray line up in the slot a ton. Okay. And the only reason why I say that is we're getting Kennedy Brooks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This man has had a – not only was this man a complete and utter beast bef- the season before he opted out, yeah, he's had a whole year of just doing nothing, but I'm assuming beefing up, getting more in shape, and just being a beast. Dude, he's hungry. He's Dude, ready to go. Gotta be, gotta be. There's no reason why this man won't be starving this coming season. He's probably so. kicking himself, man. Like, why didn't I play last year? Why oh, I know. Play? I know, dude. Yeah. It's crazy. I think I think this is gonna be the the first season that we've seen in a while where we've got, you know, two two talented backs lining up in the backfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it it's it's gonna be pretty damn awesome. Um, oh yeah. It, yeah, that's who I think his weapons are going to be. I, I think it's going to be a tandem just like we saw with uh, Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan. You know, one's going to be the more downhill, physical, punishing runner, and one's going to be, you know, the receiving back, the one with speed and feet and everything. So I, I'm excited for it, man. 
Oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun, dude. Uh, this whole season, it's just gonna be like, you, you know those, you know like when on NCAA twenty fourteen when you could play like as Oregon. <laughs> yeah, and it was just like a complete and total <laughs> cheat code for the whole dude, game. Dude. OU's got the chance to do that every uh. single game. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that pretty much sums up my top five. Uh, yeah. Before yeah. we go, let me ask you this as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we are going to? So let me rephrase that. Yeah, rephrase it. <laughs> is it <laughs> is it practical to think that we are going to see full capacity for these games? Oh, dude, I think so. Um, I mean, you know, uh, a sport that's going on right now, the NBA, they. I, I saw just, what, two weeks ago, they, they started the majority, well, maybe not the majority, um, but a good handful of their stadiums, you know, across the U.S. and the NBA are already starting to let fans uh, come in at full capacity already. I mean, and things are only getting better. I mean, the U.S., you know, with COVID cases is on the d the decline. You know, we got the uh, the a DL, the DL. You know, it's on the DL. Uh, we got you know the vaccines here. There, there's less and less cases every day. We we've already seen a bigger, more major um, sports organization already allow a lot of their teams to have full capacity. I don't see why um, these college teams wouldn't be able to operate at full capacity, especially being primarily in outdoor environments as well. You know, with the NBA, you're you're enclosed in this environment in a big, you know, stadium. Most uh -huh. of these, I mean, most of, if not all, the college football stadiums are going to be outdoor type environments. So I, I fully expect most of the teams to be operating at full capacity. And I am so excited to see that because, I mean, that atmosphere, you just can't beat the atmosphere of the fans just going crazy for their team, man. And it just, it makes the game more exciting, more intense. It makes the guys want to play harder. Um, and it's, it's awesome. And I, I, I hope, I hope to see it at full capacity, but what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I think that we, I think that, oh my goodness, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, <laughs> How professional. Kenny I Lillard. know, right? Can't even put the <laughs> phone on silent, bro. But Man. no, I, I think that we're probably going to see it be full capacity. Personally, I don't I don't know that it's going to be practical. You know, it, it might it's, not be practical. See, so the whole thing, my whole stance on COVID and stuff is I'm almost it's I'm almost like a gun shy dog in yeah. in context to COVID because we've seen so many increases and then we've seen so many decreases and it just sure. it's like it's always fluctuating, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, even even some of these other countries, you know, are are seeing like a third and fourth spike right now. Yeah, oh yeah. So, you know, India, I mean, they're they're like topping the charts on uh new covid cases and deaths and everything. It's insane. Yeah, man, it's it's nuts. So I don't know if it's I don't know if it's necessarily a good idea, but personally, I am so ready <laughs> and excited to hear that, you know, there's a lot of different college stadiums right now that are considering, you know, doing full capacity. Yeah, uh, got any pop questions? For no, me? um, you know I didn't come prepared like you, Caleb. I'm sorry, I don't it's have any good. awesome questions to ask you. It's all good. This is all. This was kind of an impromptu podcast, anyway. Yeah, uh, just just a short, sweet little something, something. Just wanted to keep it simple. Wanted to uh, wanted to keep pumping out some videos and stuff like that. Uh, again, we didn't get any comments on the last video. We need some comments. We need to know what we need to talk about. So let us know. What let he's us saying know. is you comment or we will find you. <laughs> yeah, we will find you. <laughs> Don't get doxxed. You give us feedback or you're not going <laughs> to like what's happening. Dude, all of our fans are about to be like, oh my God, they just threatened us. Yeah. <laughs> Checking out their windows. What the heck? <laughs> They're about to go and like close out of their browser and go burn their computers in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. I'm never watching football again. Ronnie, are you burning the laptop again? But oh no, guys, um, I think that's pretty much going to conclude it. We're going to get, yeah. we're, we're going to go be stupid on our own time. We're not going to, we're not going to waste y'all's time. 
So, uh, yeah, that's, I think that pretty much covers the second podcast, man. It's feeling good. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm still nervous, but I'm getting a little bit more comfortable. Uh, it's yeah. just going to be a matter of kind of getting used to everything. You know? It's, it's more better. It's more better, Caleb. It's, it's more fun. better. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm really having a good time just sitting here chatting about it. I mean, you know, it's, it's a good old grand time. So, uh, we're going to keep on doing it. I don't see any reason to stop anytime soon. So hopefully, you know, if you're listening to this, you just keep on trucking along with us. Yeah, man. Wait, did I say more better? I I said more better and you said mo better. No, like before though, when I was talking, like explaining myself being comfortable and stuff. No, I no, no. I, better? I literally in my head, I was about to say that like, and be illiterate. <laughs> And I decided to just go ahead and say it for the heck of it, just so I can show how Ill- illiterate I am. Okay, just yeah. so you guys heard it, it was not me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You said the double negative. You're good. You're good. <laughs> but, but no, guys, that's pretty much it. We're going to get off here. We'll catch you guys later. Thank you all <laughs> so much for the views. Thank you for the subs. Uh, stay tuned.